busy in this. <gasps> Is that what she sounds like? <laughs> This case has been all over the news. It's been in every headline for honestly months. I don't know. It, it feels like this case didn't catch on as hard as the media tried to. You know, they gave them the name the Doomsday Couple. They did every special in the world. The case of the Doomsday Mom, Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow. Lori Vallow has finally been brought to justice, in my opinion. You know, so far, of course, she's going to come through and try to file an appeal in the name of God or something something like that, but I really like the way this judge kind of gives it to her. I, I only saw two minutes of this, but I figured I'd watch the rest with you guys. This is Lori Vallow Daybell receives life in prison without parole for the murder of her two children. Now, remember, there were a lot of other people involved in this death circle, but we really only had firm evidence for the children because ultimately they found their bodies. Also, I cannot get over how smug Lori Vallow was looking through this whole trial. I mean, from the press in the beginning when the reporters were chasing her down to every moment in the courtroom, this bitch <coughs> really looked righteous. She really looked like she thought she was in the right. And even as the judge hands down this sentence, I still don't see that smug look getting wiped off her face, which is just really annoying to me. You haven't shown any remorse. You haven't said you're sorry. You haven't done anything to seek leniency from this court. There's been a lot of people during trial and here who have explained the devastation you're responsible for and you've forever altered the lives, not in a good way for many, many people, destroying okay, family relationships, that. taking people away <laughs> that were loved, cared for, and needed. You may not believe to this day that you've done anything wrong and you still may yeah, think you're justified can't believe it. Her by your face religious time beliefs too. for what happened here. I'm not here to judge that, but I don't believe that any God in any religion would want to have have this happen, what happened here. Remember, Lori was under some kind of spell, the Daybell spell. I, I don't know. I I just want to remind you. I can't believe I have to say this. Chad Daybell, the guy that she left her husband for and killed her husband for, possibly, allegedly. She wasn't convicted of that, but he was a doomsday writer. And he believed that all people were sinners, all people were forms of demons. I don't know, that God was coming to take him and Lori alone. And they were fully convinced of this. Killing her two children, saying they were zombies. So not only is Lori a killer, but she's freaking <clears throat> dumb. Let's just be real. This guy, I think he's been watching Lori be so smug the whole time in the courtroom. He doesn't know what to say because he knows it's not going to get through to her. She's not listening. I really reserve the phrase dumb bitch for just really special people. And my God, is Lori Vallow one of them? So after weighing all those factors, I need to in aggravation. I find that the sentences I'm about to impose will serve the interest of justice by number one, preventing you from ever doing this again. That's right. That they will not depreciate the seriousness of your crimes will punish you appropriately and will serve to deter both you and others. I'm really curious what prison life for Lori is gonna be like. So many women in prison are mothers that would give anything to be with their child. There's a lot of women in prison who also end up seeing their daughters later in jail and they regret so many decisions. They feel like they would do it over and over and over again. They would do it differently. I wonder, is any group gonna take Lori in or is she gonna be a fucking <coughs> weirdo? You know, people didn't even take Jodi Arias seriously when she went on her whole Christian arc, right? And people didn't really buy it, you know, but Lori, if she starts preaching in jail, I don't know, I would have to ask them to send her to solitary personally. The charge you were convicted of, the, the first degree murder of Tylee Ryan, 
you are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence of fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. On count four, she didn't even move. The charge of the first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow. In fact, nobody in the courtroom moved or budged. We knew you did it and we knew you were going away for life. Bye bye. Bye bye. You are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinant life imprisonment sentence with no possibility of parole. I'll next address the three conspiracy counts you've been convicted of and note under Idaho Code 181701, the punishment for those crimes is the same as the underlying offenses you combine to commit. One of the offenses you combined to commit was first degree murder. So those may be punishable also by imprisonment for life. I mean, she already gone, but drive it home. When I look at what the appropriate sentences should be for the conspiracy charges, at first I wondered if they should be as long of a term or serious as the substantive murder charges. However, also, let me just be clear. Even though, you know, I say she's already got life in prison, the reason why we stack it up is because if she tries to appeal or if she tries to get one thing overturned, then we have a laundry list of other things that are also giving her 10 years, 20 years, life in prison. So, I mean, stack it up as much as you want, Judge. What I've concluded is that these conspiracy convictions merit the same grave punishment for several reasons. First, Don't the conspiracies in which you engaged in have had far reaching impacts on many people besides the deceased victims. Bose just wait, her mic moment will get you? Does she talk in this? There's no way. So on count one, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception, you're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence to fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. Count three, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow and grand theft by deception. You're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinant term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. And on count five, the conspiracy to commit the first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell. You're sentenced to the custody of the State own Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence a fixed determinate term of life imprisonment. A lot of times in true crime cases, when there's a couple that does it all for love or for each other to prove their love, what happens is when they get separated, they kind of fall out of the spell. Very often they get into the interrogation room and they turn on each other right away. Or sometimes they'll go to jail in separate wards and they can't have contact with each other, but they still are looking for these moments and they still care about each other. And then a few years later, maybe months down the line, it wears off. I can totally see Lori Vallow being in love with Chad for much longer than anticipated and not letting go of this delusion because it's easier to live in this delusion where she's a warrior for God and how to take the lives of her children. Otherwise, the rapture was going to come. It's easier for her to live in that delusion than to deal with what she's done. I believe she might actually just be stuck like this for a long time. I'm a pragmatic person and I've struggled with the point of a consecutive sentence when in Idaho a life sentence is just that a life sentence without parole mm -hmm. and I've thought it through however when I looked at this case and the more I thought about it I've determined that because there are three separate murders with three separate victims that occurred at three separate times then running counts concurrently would not serve the interests of justice because those crimes all need to be taken into account separately and distinctly and individually. And you need to be held accountable separately for each of the three murders. So on those counts, the court will run consecutively the count two murder of Tylee uh, Ryan right, you know, consecutive to count. I like when judges go off on horrible people because this is finally the moment where they get a little dose of reality, a little. But I have like kind of some respect in the fact that he realizes there's nothing he can say to her. She, she's gone. Nothing up there. Absolutely nothing up there. Lori, oh, Lori Vallow speaks. Okay, okay, okay. Please excuse me. Busy in this. <gasps> is that what she sounds like? 
All right, Ms. Fallow, before I impose sentence, if you choose, you may address the court. This is known as the right of allocution, which permits you to make a statement on your own behalf or present any information and in mitigation of the punishment for the crimes you've committed. And let me inquire at this time, do you wish to address this court? I don't think I've ever heard her speak. I'm going to throw up. I would like to start by Shut up. quoting John from the New Testament in the Bible. And John Girl, sounded like my grandmama. Are you f***ing kidding me, dude? Bose, try to get through a stream without getting triggered challenge. Somebody said impossible. Shut up. Get out. <laughs> In John chapter 8, verse 7, Jesus says, He that is without sin among you, let him cast first cast a stone at her. Then in first, verse 15, Jesus says, Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, wow. my judgment is true is she really telling the judge that he shouldn't be judging anyone but if she judges someone it's true because i'm a warrior of god do you guys feel like these statements affected her sentencing i might have had to hit her over the head with the gavel jesus knows me jesus is a friend of mine this is my friend and jesus understands me he taught me how to live my life as it should be i mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Yeah, he does. He knows what you did, Lori. One thing that I do find a little bit interesting is she said, my children. A lot of times when people murder their children, they use distancing phrases like those children. I mourn those children. I mourn these children with you. There, there's this distance. I find it very interesting that she said my children. Like she's actually able to say that. Or maybe it comes from a more narcissistic standpoint of, oh, they were my property, so I can sacrifice them to whoever I want. Um, I don't know what you guys get from that, but I just, I thought it was interesting. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. What? Suicides happen. <gasps> I have a different perspective in life. Yes, yeah, wrong. Because in 2002, when I was pregnant with Tylee, I died in the hospital while in labor with her. Watch the judge. Look at my man right here when she says that. I died in the hospital while in labor with her. They tried to stop my labor. <sighs> they put me on the table and they put something in my IV and I felt my spirit falling to the floor. It's called drugs. I was standing Lori. near my pregnant body, watching the doctors try to revive me, which took them a few minutes. In that time, my sister Stacy was standing to my left. I turned to hug her and was surprised that her spirit was as tangible as a physical body. Those are drugs. Because I knew I was in spirit and she was in spirit. It sounds like somebody slipped a little ayahuasca in the in the tube or something like that. But I mean, that that is definitely, if she never had an oxy before, that's what it sounds like to me, sister. She said she needed to show me some things and we went to heaven. <laughs> because of this experience, I have access to heaven and the spirit world. Did you guys know that when women are having babies, when you have an epidural, it's not just like a shot. They hook it up to your spinal cord. That is the biggest fucking dose of drugs that you're ever gonna get in your life and it's dripped in for hours on end. Got her Including hooked up like the children. matrix and she's surprised Tyler she had Ashley, a spiritual experience. Joshua Jackson, my sisters, Stacy and Lolly, my aunts and my uncles and my grandparents, I have had many communications with Jesus Christ, the savior of this world and our heavenly parents. I've had many angelic visitors have come and communicated with me and even manifested themselves to me. Because of these communications, she I know like for a, a fact DMT. that my children are happy and busy in the spirit world. Do you guys think that there's a world where Chad introduced her to any type of drugs and put it together as like a spiritual experience. I didn't think about that at all as a possibility until now, but like even though she just straight up lied about 
you know, how three people died where she was like, drug overdoses are real, suicide is real, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, that was just a straight up lie and she was able to do that. But some of these like little spiritual experiences that she's talking about, I would not be surprised if they had a little, little DMT, you know, just a little quick 15 minutes in and out. And she, because the way she's describing some of this stuff, it sounds like she was on drugs. This doesn't sound like she was so intoxicated by love and like closing her eyes and dreaming these things, unless this is severe mental illness. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering if you guys think that there was a little bit of drugs in the mix. Because of my communications with my friend, Tammy Daybell, I know that she is also very happy and extremely busy. I have always mourned the loss of my loved ones, and I have lost many in this mortal <laughs> Look at world. him writing. I know them more than most people. I know where they are now and what they're doing. I know how wonderful heaven is, and I'm homesick for it every single day. I know we all lived in heaven before we were born on earth, and we were all adults. They were in Hawaii in the doing drugs. I'm, I, we chose I, to come to earth as mortals. I feel strongly about this now. I do. I did not want to return to my body when I was out of it. Even though my son Colby, who I adored more than anything, was only six years old at the time, and I was about to give birth to this new baby girl that I wanted so badly. Somebody in chat said, this is all a massive Mormon talking point. I could see that. I, I, really, I don't know too, too much about Mormonism, but I could totally see that. Because wasn't Lori, isn't she from Utah? She was Mormon, huh? It's ghetto here. I've never heard anyone describe Utah as ghetto. <laughs> That's a first for me. <laughs> I stood in it's heaven. I did here. not want to go back. I thought they would be fine without me because I was peaceful and I was happy and I was home. But then I was told by Jesus that I needed to go back and complete things that I had covenanted or promised to do before I was born. This caused me a lot of distress because I knew heaven was my real home and I only wanted to be there. I was free from pain, emotional and physical. But then I was shown how I would help my children and others in the future. So ultimately I did agree to go back to my body. This is too much for him. Kylie has visited me. She is happy and very busy. Tylee is free now from all the pains of her life. Tylee suffered horrible physical pain her whole life. What? I sat How with Tylee in the hospital. How did she lie like this? Year. The other thing that is so strange about this is her being in love with Chad and having a cult with him where he was trying to recruit other women and her helping. That's completely left out of this testimony. We're five minutes in and there has been no talk of this maddening love or, or Chad in this at all. You're just lying because that was such a big factor. After year after year, while she screamed in pain when the morphine wasn't even enough to take away the pain of her pancreatitis. She, she's I sat lying. there while she cried and I <gasps> held back her hair while she threw up. She's and I'm the lying. only person on this earth who knows how much Tylee suffered in her life. She had pain every single day. You're she not... never felt good. No. Her body did not work right. And I don't know if that was from complications from me dying while she was being born or something else, but she had a very difficult life. Nobody gave any she reports was of that. She used by Nobody. her own biological father since she was three years old and she was forced by family court to go visit him for 10 years against her will. She was, she was SSA? I fought for her in court. I protected her. I tried to protect her with my whole life, I tried to protect her. Yeah, I worried about her real every single day. Tylee had to get her GED. She out she there go to school every day like because she never out felt out the toilet. Good. She's sniffing shit. She felt sick. Because I don't know how this can Nobody just keep going. Nobody knows this because Tylee, like myself, tries to put on a good front, tries to be a happy person, tries to have hope in life, tries to know that she's here for a purpose and that she has an eternal purpose to be on this earth. But I never stopped worrying about her. One of the times that Tylee came to me as a spirit after she died, she said, she commanded me and she said to me, stop worrying, mom. We are fine. She knows how I worry how could you and say how I this? miss her. I really stick to what I said before. 
Lori will never snap out of this because she's sick for sure. But she chooses to cling on to this this delusion because it's going to feel better than having to come to terms with what she did. I'm JJ visited me after he passed away. He put his arm around me and he said to me, you didn't do anything wrong, mom. I can't, I, dude, I, bro, ugh. you guys came to the channel because you wanted to hear Lori Vallow say all this. I cannot listen to her speak about these children in this manner at all anymore. I can't do it. Um, if you really want to watch the video, there's another minute and 30 seconds left of her just spewing bullshit. But personally, I have to tap out at this point and I appreciate you respecting that. <laughs>